I want you to go to Romans 1 verse 11. The Lord opened my eyes this morning. Are you here? This is Paul speaking. He says, how I long to see you that I may impart. Say impart. Say impart. Please be here. Say impart. He said that I may impart some spiritual gift unto you. Why? That in the end you may be established. Say some spiritual gift. That means that Paul did not limit it to a specific spiritual gift. That means that when we meet in the house of God, there are endless possibilities. The gift you need in this service is not necessarily what your neighbor needs. Hallelujah. If you partner with the spirit realm, you qualify for supernatural possibilities. Now, this is what people in the world do. They partner with the spirit realm in the negative and they achieve things that believers struggle to achieve. Then it looks like the negative works better than the positive. Now watch this. The reason why they have results more than believers and the Bible says they are wiser than the children of light. The reason why that is so is because they take seriously what they are told to do so that they can partake of that spirit realm. Look at what Paul says. He says, I long to see you. So seeing you is not enough. Kumaksa uh, register is not enough. That I may impart some spiritual gift unto you that in the end you may be established. So we meet for impartation. We meet for impartation. And not just impartation for the sake of impartation, but so that in the end you may be established. So the end goal is the end game of establishment in destiny. Uh, I, 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 I've noticed some people who, when breakthroughs are delaying, follow me, they stop coming to church. I don't understand that drama. Because it's like watch Gara in a garden. Hello? And then you ignore the garden. And you say, why am I not harvesting? <laughs> you are not in the garden. <laughs> Who told you you would reap after you sow? Immediately. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? I mean, the Lord opened my eyes. He says it doesn't make sense. You plant it in a garden, you ignore the garden. You get an attitude about the garden. It does not work, Doc Rumpi, to have an attitude towards God. You don't stay away from the presence. The presence is where you partner with the Holy Spirit. Staying away from God has no profit. It has no profit. And God does not come to look for you because you're ignoring him. Okay. Let me show you. Let me show you. Hebrews 11, 6. He's the rewarder of those who seek him. Not those who have an attitude and ignore him. There's a difference between prayer and seeking. Seeking means you don't find him in the first minute. Okay. <laughs> Looking for something means it's hiding. Huh? The rewarder is not for prayer. The rewarder is for seeking. So you can forfeit your reward by stopping seeking after you have prayed. There are people who say, I have prayed, but have you sought for him? Okay. Let, 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 let me give it to you from another angle. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. He says, I know the plans I have for you, prophecy. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, future and a hope. Are you here? Okay, right. Somebody said there are plans. Next verse. Then means after you've heard the plans, call on me huh? and come to pray to you and I will listen to you. He didn't say I'll come. I'll listen. So God listened to your prayer but you still need to go to the next level. Next verse. You will seek me. So after prayer they're seeking. So prayer and seeking are two different things. Prayer is telling heaven what you want done on earth. 
Heaven can listen. But before heaven does it, they want to check your heart. So your heart is revealed by if you go further to seeking. So in other words, you are not just one of those who wants things done outside the presence. You are seeking for the presence. So the, uh, getting into the presence is what qualifies you for answered prayer. Not praying. You're, you're a prayer machine, but you're not a God seeker. I can close this. You are good. Hello? Hello? What is to seek God? To say, Lord, I just want to be in your presence. I just want to hang out with you. In other words, you, you have taken the prayer points and put them aside. Now it's all about a relationship with God. Relationship. There's two words there. Relate and ship. We are relating and we are in the ship. People who just pray don't want relationship. They want what's in the ship. But they don't want to relate in the ship. God is looking for a relationship. You are looking for things. He is looking for relationship. This is where many times God and us we clash. Prove to God that beyond the breakthrough, I'm still here. Why? Our relationship is not transactional. So sometimes God will delay the breakthrough to see if it's transactional. Okay. If you go and you want to do a transaction with someone, can I, let's say borrow a village. Hello? You want to meet at uh, Pistachio, thank you. Pistachio. To sit down, conclude a deal. Hello? Hello? If the person does not come, hello? Do you stay there? No, because you went to do what? A transaction. So the purpose for you going there was no longer in effect. So you left. Am I right? Am I right? Question, is that how your relationship is with God? How dare you threaten to leave church because your breakthrough has not come? It means you are transactional. You are not relational. So, this seeking the Lord is not a series. We are birthing a new lifestyle. Listen, he said to me, never do prayer shift. Prayer shift before you seek me. He said, you're wasting time. You are transactional. Are you listening to me? Listen, you need to give a seed to God. That has got nothing to do with the harvest. No, I'm telling you. That, that just says, Lord, I love you. Lord, is your relationship with God seasonal? In a season where you need something only. That is called spiritual prostitution. And it must stop. Convince God you are there to stay. I, I, I hope you are. Now watch this. This is what the Lord said to me this, this morning. He said, the moment you start to seek for me, hello, before you find me, to make it easy for you, I, the Lord, start to look for you. Okay. I'll prove it. He said, you will seek me, you it, and I will make sure you find me. Only when you search for me with the whole of, so while you are seeking, God is hiding, checking your heart. Mm, you didn't get that. The moment you start seeking for God, he starts looking at your heart. When he's convinced that your whole heart is in it. Okay. I know when you start looking for, for God, at first, there's a big ML that is sponsoring that, those tears. But when you move beyond the ML and it stops being about the ML, it starts being about him. He says, ah, okay. Now I will allow you to find me. Is this Psalm 80 verse 18 which says, draw me. It says, quicken me. Quicken me. Quicken me and I will seek after you. That means that there is a seeking divinely assisted 
by the realm of the spirit so kune kutsvaga nwari kwekuti uri kubatsirwa kutsvaga nwari na nwari god is helping you to find him why because listen to me there are times when you get into prayer and you can't come out in the natural you cannot do that that is by the realm of the spirit say the spirit so you can pray in the flesh and you can pray in the spirit when you pray in the spirit i'm not talking about tongues when you pray from the realm of the spirit you are praying prayers that are guaranteed of answers why because god comes even worship you can you can play a worship song while you are texting on whatsapp you are playing it in the flesh but the hour cometh and now is when the true watch this true worshipers shall do what worship him in spirit so you can worship out of the spirit and in truth that means you can say things that you don't mean them so you need to say things from the spirit realm and you need to say it in truth until that lord i worship you becomes true to you he does not hear it so we start in the flesh we don't deny that we start in the flesh there are distractions so if you are still looking around you can't get a hold of god looking around at people so i know you start in the flesh i know you started the flesh because you've been in the flesh the whole day hello but learn to get quickly into the realm of the spirit how does that happen by focusing the hour cometh that means it took time and now is when who not the church when the worshipers must worship him how in spirit that's from a spiritual realm and in truth it means what you are saying you mean it when god becomes real to you it is now in the spirit when the scriptures come alive then they become real the letter killeth it is the spirit that gives life even ezekiel did not prophesy until the lord took him to the realm of the spirit even god did not even dare say let there be anything never mind light let there be anything until the spirit moved until the spirit moved when the spirit moves when you then speak the word when you then prophesy when you then declare what you say now has life James brought a revelation. The body without the spirit is dead. Are you saying dead things? Are you worshiping dead worship? Are you declaring dead declarations? If the spirit is not behind it, it is dead. Job said the spirit made me, not the word, the spirit, the spirit, the spirit. The word only works if it has spirit backing it. So all this, because some people are getting bored. We are just singing endlessly. You know, that deliverance, that deliverance. I'm trying to, to get you to change realm. You have done many things that have not worked because you've done them from the wrong realm. Wrong realm. You have done it in the flesh. You have even given seed in the flesh. So there are donations. When the spirit is at its peak and you take your seed out of revelation and you throw it onto the altar, it produces result. Say, I'll get into the spirit. I'll partner with the spirit. Say it again. Say, I'll partner with the spirit. Okay. Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray. You see, it starts with humility. Coming to pray is proof of humility. Proud people don't pray. Proud people simply won't come for prayer. Okay, that's why you see the big fish on Sunday. You don't see them during the week. Anywho. <laughs> if my people who are called by my name, do what? Humble themselves and pray. Right? And then what? And do what? So there's a difference between praying and seeking. Okay. If they seek my face, turn from the wicked ways, then I'll come down, presence. God comes when you seek, not when you pray. When you pray, you can answer like a phone call. You can answer. 
Call on me and I'll answer. He can answer, but he won't come. I don't just want him to answer. I want him to come. I want him to come. Thank God for answered prayer, but I want the presence more than answers to prayer. Because if, listen to me, if God just answers your prayer, he answers a specific thing. But if his presence is there, he will answer everything. He will answer everything. You ask for resources, but he will come and heal you. He will come and deliver you. He says, then I will come and heal the land. They were not even praying about the land, but he came and he healed the land. That means when he comes, healing comes. When he comes, deliverance comes. When he comes, restoration comes. Uh, yeah, yeah, you see, you've been doing it manually, praying for things one one. When you just need the presence, if the presence is there, all things are answered. Then he perfects all things that concern you. Psalm 138 verse 7 and 8. Listen. God answered prayer for other people, but he walked, he walked with Enoch. Which do you want? You see, your, your request of prayers that you have is very small. Can you imagine? God wants to do a million things for you via his presence, but you have five prayer points. When he comes, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. When he comes, he will give you things you did not know you needed. You didn't even know you needed it. When he comes, he will defend you from things you do not even know they are attacking you. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall what? Shall abide, not visit under the shadow of the almighty watch this when you seek for God he looks for you and he finds you how many believe David was seeking for God in the wilderness huh? okay now then God said in 1 Samuel 13 verse 14 I have found David a man after and as the Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. That means David was looking for God and then God started looking for David. I, I don't know if you're understanding that, 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 that revelation. If you seek for him with your heart hello now, notice what he didn't say. He didn't say, Amen, after my own wallet. He didn't say, Amen, after my own riches. He didn't say, Amen, after the palace. You are looking for palace. Look for his heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship where it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I made it. Where it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Watch this. I want you to learn a new way. You can pray, 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 but shift to seeking. And listen, you dispense less energy and get more results. Has anybody ever asked you to do something and you said, okay, I'll do it? Huh? And then they kept asking about the same thing. Huh? It started to be annoying. Don't annoy God with your prayer requests. <laughs> he heard you the first time. Hello? Now going to seek him. <laughs> In the book of Acts, the church prayed. Peter prayed. Hello? He got out of prison. This one. But in Acts 16, they prayed and they worshipped 
and God came down. That's why he shook the prison. There was no shaking in X12. <laughs> but in X16, there was a shaking. Why? Because doom, doom. The giant Jehovah came. I know you're a prayer machine, but turn to an addicted worshiper. I'm teaching you a new way. I'm teaching you a new way. Say, I'm addicted to worship. I'm addicted to his presence. When I ask for his presence, I, I switch away from prayer requests. Those are now small, small things. If I convince him I'm his child, worship, I get the children's bread. If I keep focusing on bread, that's all I get. Say, Lord, I worship you. Say, it's all about you. I love to worship you. I love being in your presence. I'm not in a hurry. In your presence. There's no rush. As I come to your presence, I'm not in a hurry. I'm not rushing. Because, Lord, I am a lover of God. Say, Lord, I love you. I'm teaching you how to get into his presence. Say, Lord, I love you. Mm. I know you're used to going with lists. No, 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 no. Lord, I love you. Uh, the list you go into his presence with is a list of worship songs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not just things to do, uh, but things to say to him. Things to worship. Say, Lord, I adore you. I magnify you. Forgive me for not valuing your presence. Look at all the great men of God that do great things around the world. People like Benny Hinn. It's all about worship, seeking. Seeking. You see, if you are dispensing too much energy, you are trying to do it yourself. It's not by might. Never by power. But by my now, how does it happen by the Spirit if you don't invite the Spirit? Raise your hands. Say, Spirit of the living God, fall freshly upon my life. Spirit of God, descend upon my life. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in my life. The things I'm facing, I can't do them without you. So, Holy Spirit, I need you to come. Come down in your majesty. Come down in your power. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 17. I hope you are getting something this morning. People who want to dispense a lot of energy want glory. Come, I'll pray for you. No. No. Come and God will use me to usher you into his presence and even things you didn't discuss with me on whatsapp you'll fix them now the lord second corinthians 3 17 the lord is is the spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there 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 is deliverance not where the apostle is no not where the prophet is. No. Where the spirit of the Lord is. So you come looking for deliverance. I introduce you to his presence. And where his presence is, there is what? There's liberty. Say liberty. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. Any bondage you have, drag it to the presence of God. It has to lose you. If we do this right, hello, in one service, all demonic affliction can go. All of it. How many have read about the madman of Gadarene? Huh? Now, how many encounters did they have with Jesus? How many? One encounter with Jesus. This one. Jesus being an embodiment of the Spirit of God. Right? And all those, how many, more than 6,000 devils, they all died that day. You never hear that and it came to pass that he started again. The reason why you are starting again is because the deliverance was not done in the presence of God. It was done in the presence of a man of God. 
are, are, are you catching these things? Are you catching these things? Okay. Because sometimes, you know, we are confused. One minute, mama. Sometimes we are confused. The Bible says whatever the spirit of the Lord does is forever. Or what God does is forever. I mean, I mean, huh? So what the man of God does is temporary. But what God does is men of God won't teach you this because they want to appear like the champion. Me, I'm no champion. Presence, when it comes, anyone to tell you, Marinya Yangu, I am no easy. Take all the glory, oh the glory, Almighty oh, God. Take all the glory, oh the glory, oh Lord. Look at this charity come, come now. Um, give me, give me. Two towels or two. Yeah. Quick, 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 quick. Two towels. Okay, let's say that this is uh, fibroids. This one. Okay. And let's say that this is cancer. Are you here? Okay. Now, mind the camera. Mind the camera. This is fibroids. This is what? Cancer. This one. Okay. So she's got fibroids and cancer, God forbid an example. My words are powerful so I have to say God forbid. Okay? So if you then raise your hands to heaven, right? And then you say, take all the glory, almighty God. What are you doing? You're worshipping. Am I right? So when you're worshipping, he doesn't answer, he comes. Am I right? So he comes because you have said, take all the glory, mighty God. So you've asked him to take the glory and you've told him he's mighty. Two things. This way, Okay, so he now searches. What's to stop? Stop, 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 stop. He now searches. You're distracting. He now searches your life. Hello? To see, okay, this girl is saying, take all the glory. This does not give me glory, so he takes it away. This does not give me glory, so he takes it away. Back to my example. Mirawas, you will come. Back to my example. Huh? She has got fibroids and cancer. Fibroids you can feel. Cancer you can't see. Right. If she then says, man of God, I have got a prayer request. Right? I have fibroids. This one. The man of God will come and spiritually, manually remove the what? The fibroids. But she does not know she has got cancer. This one. So, <laughs> But when he comes, he knows all things. He sees all things. So you remove things that you did not even know they needed to be removed. Take all the glory. All the glory. Almighty God. Take all After she says what she says, just say to me, angels, you remind me what I need. Amen. Oh, okay. Um, okay, before I say what I wanted to say, when you are, when you are praying for charity, there's a lady in the, in the house in KPM. Um, she went, I think for pap smear, whatever, a banza, a cancer in the uterus. So we're in a season of worship. So she thought, Kutia, you know what? This is not the time for uh, prayer requests. It's time for worship. We are in a season of worship. So she was just worshiping and she left everything to God. Yesterday, she went, because um, she was supposed to go for the review so that, uh, was, I think, operation, I'm not sure. And then when she went yesterday, and they looked and looked and looked and looked and looked, there was nothing. Amen. Somebody said there was nothing. Nothing. Amen. Uh, Apostle spoke about uh, there are some things, it's funny, the time he said it, I was thinking about it. Kuti, at times you pray for the tangible things that you know that you want. 
but there are things that you don't know that you need or want whether they are tangible things or not maybe you want the healing of your mom but you are just your mom needs healing but when you are in the presence of God God knows what you want amen and what you would want what you need maybe that you don't know at that present moment as you are praying uh, I'll give an example okay normally when we go to South Africa in Indian Dinamakadang right I get into a shop and I see I see this and I see that and I'm like I take every I try we try in Atanaga we go to the we go to the till Paku but it's like are you taking this yes are you taking this mm. I put this aside, you know, because I'll be looking and I'm like, ee, sha, nya, nya. and you know, no, no. and some, sometimes I take, sometimes no, see, and then, so I think he now knows and then, so he says, okay, shop for the kids and everything, and then I would have taken some stuff for me and I'm, I'm like, I'm fine then he says, okay last day, let's go for your shopping, wapeza shivana so when I go with him I, I, don't, get I don't want to do the rounds of the kids yeah I get into that shop and I realize that I see each and each and each, right? I take those things. Um, then I go and try. When I'm trying, the lady comes. My, your husband told me to give you this. And he tried this. And, and I'm like, so we go to the same shops. So they now know us. So every time I get into the shop, like, where's your husband today? Because they know commission. <laughs> so, because I'm now in his presence, so I'm, I'm talking about this like he is God. So, when I go with his presence into that shop, I come out with a full basket of things that I didn't even know that I needed and of things that I could not afford myself and then i come out in that shop anzi want your mother like this the, you've got a sister called rumbi won't she like this and i'm in the changing i'm like to the lady i'm coming out i'm i'm coming you know because i've gone with the presence of god amen let me let me qualify that and sarah called abraham lord That's why as a husband, if you don't provide, you are failing on your lordly duties. Listen, angels. I've never heard that an angel is sick. Why? They don't have fire prayers in heaven. We bless your name. <laughs> Almighty God, we bow before. We bless your name. Almighty God, we bow before. So we glorify, we glorify your That's why angels are not sick because they are always in his presence. <laughs> That's why angels excel in strength because they are always in his presence. That's why angels have been given the assignment to do the word because they are always in his presence. The more you are in his presence, the more supernatural power like angels you have, the more you scale heights, the more you do the impossible. You cannot be sick if you are in his presence. I mean, you cannot be saying, we glorify your holy name. You are the king. And you remain poor. No, no, no. You have just not done it properly. <laughs> Give yourself entirely to this. Give yourself in. Listen. Uh, the rest of the year. Give yourself entirely to worship. 
give yourself entirely to seeking not things him 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 look for him do you know what someone who's looking for god says even if i don't get the things and i get you i have everything i need it's out of a revelation of understanding who he is ah thank you lord true worship is birthed out of understanding the love of God. When you understand that Jesus is the lover of your soul, you know that when you find him, he can't leave you poor. He can't leave you stranded. He can't leave you being delayed. He can't leave you being frustrated because you understand who he is. The more I worship him, the deeper my understanding of him, 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 him. They that do know the God Thou shall be strong and do exploits. Not they that know projects. No, they that know God. Not they that know politicians. No, they that know God. No God. No God. That word no is an intimate knowledge, kononia, intimate knowledge of God, communion with Him. And He will strengthen you and you will do exploits. As long as Uzia sought the Lord. God in his presence caused him to prosper. I, 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 I can never be poor. I know too much. As it, as it, even if you even if you remove the economy, there's no economy. I can know I can never be poor because you can remove the economy, but you cannot remove the presence. As long as the presence is there. Out of the road of Aaron, bad it. There are things that will bad just because you are in the presence. There are things that will happen just because you are in the presence. There are supernatural things that must happen because you are a carrier of the presence. When Moses was going to see Pharaoh, he didn't say, Lord, give me weapons. He said, give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Give me you. Everything else can wait. I'm going to see Pharaoh. So give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Listen to what he was saying. He was saying, if you don't come, I'm not going. Because if I go, Pharaoh will defeat me. But if you come, I will win. Lord, if you go to work with me, I will win. If you go for the interview with me, I will win. If you go for the meeting with me, victory is guaranteed. If you go here with me, I will win. There's, it's a guarantee. Why? Listen to me. Don't worship God as if you are worshiping a loser. Hayata, he is a winner God hallelujah and if he comes you will win because he will win the eyes of the Lord run to and fro around the earth he's looking for they that love him I'm paraphrasing so that he can show himself strong on their behalf while he's there if he's there he will go before you and make the crooked places straight he will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut up asunder the bars of iron if he comes the limits will break if he comes the stress will go let God arise presence let the enemy be scattered so praying about the enemy and start praying for the presence and when he comes the enemy will be sc I wish somebody would hear me this morning let God arise and let the enemy be scattered as he comes the enemy will scatter as he comes mountains will melt like wax in the presence of God that's how we get to the title breakthroughs in the presence breakthroughs in the presence just get the presence 
and the breakthroughs will come. Don't pray for breakthroughs. Invite the presence. Invite the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah, tobacco lama high. Focus. Focus on getting more of the presence. You don't need more prayer points. You don't need more books on prayer. No, you need more presence. You don't need new oil. You don't need oil from another supermarket. You need the presence. And when you find God, everything you are looking for will begin to find you. Jesus was looking for God. Mark 135. And all men began to look for him two verses later. Oh men, oh men, oh men. I need you more, 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 more of you, more of you, more of you, my Mahaya. More, more, more of God. I need more of God. I need more, Joe. I need more of God. I am Bahaya. I need more of God. I need more God. I need more God. More of you. Everything I need is wrapped up in your presence. Ah, I will stay in your presence. I will hide under the shadow of the Almighty. The enemy will not be able to touch me from today because of the presence. You are blessed. Because of the presence. Oh, Layanda Makula Mahaya. Because of the presence, Ayata Mahaya. I need your presence and in your presence is fullness of joy when I'm depressed I must just invite your presence and fullness of joy will come I'm not going to look for your provision I'm going to look for your presence for when your presence comes it comes not only with provision it will come with healing I need your presence I need more of your presence I'm desperate for your presence. I'm crying out for your presence. I need more of your presence. Your presence, Jehovah. Oh, yeah, Say you are all that I need. Talk to him. Say you are all that I need. Say Lord I need you. It's you I need. You are all I've ever wanted. And you are all that I really ever needed. I need you Lord. Uh, raise your hands unto heaven. Say Lord I need you. I need you. I need you. Oh, I need you every hour. I need you. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come. To Listen. If you understand the power of the presence, you, you, you're going to know that you don't even really, really need the man of God's phone number. You don't really need my number. And when you lay your seed at the altar, you have given in the presence. Is that 40? Let me bless her online. Father, I pray for Tariro in the UK who has released her tithe. Father, I release this seed, this tithe into the presence of God in the name of Jesus. May she be blessed according to the word. Amen. Now, the reason why people are looking for one-on-one -on -one with the men of God is because they don't carry presence. So when you don't carry presence, watch this. That's why you come and say, Can you please pray for me? 
it means what I'm asking for from heaven, I don't qualify to receive it, but I've seen you do it. This, if I was a selfish man of God, keep it down, please. Flow with me, flow with me. If I was a selfish man of God, I would say everything you want, you have to do it through me. This is why the Sadducees and the Pharisees were not happy with Jesus. You know why? Jesus came to introduce the Holy Spirit. To show them that just like the priest could get to the holies of holies, let me tear the veil from the top to the bottom. Now you can get in for yourself. They didn't like that because it put them out of business. They profited from the people's lack of access to God. So Jesus came to give them access. Any man of God who draws attention to himself is not a man of God. He's a Sadducee and a Pharisee at best. When you're a true man of God, I commend you unto God. And to the word of his grace, which is able to build you. You come to me, I push you to God. Paul even said, follow me as I follow Christ. In other words, if I stop following Christ, stop following me. That was a disclaimer. So we push people towards God. A relationship with God. And for many people that doesn't work because they, they are lazy. So they just move from to the next prophet who says, come, come. Let me do it for you while you sit. And it does not work. Look at the churches with the numbers. The people are struggling in numbers. Because they are following a man who says, Papa will do it all for you. It's a lie. Papa is sleeping. Papa is watching, so Papa is watching soccer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't put your destiny in the hands of any man. Take it into your own hands and say, Lord, I, not as the, as the church, I as an individual, I will not let you go until you bless me, not us. You are never blessed corporately. Say face to face. Talk to me. Say face to face. It's in my notes to me. And the Bible says, and Moses, he saw God face to face. Uh, he says to the other people, I can speak in parable, but to Moses, I talk to him face to face. Say face to face. That's what I want for you. I want you to bring me praise reports. Of things that happened in his presence. I want you to tell me what happened when you encountered God. I'm more excited about a miracle that you and God work on. Than what I laid hands on you and we did. Jacob was tired of going in circles. And he said in Genesis 32. He said I have seen God face to face. And my life. My destiny is preserved. There was no pastor in the equation. This is why Old Testament kind of Christianity works better than New Testament. Because they sought for God face to face. They looked for personal encounters. Hallelujah. For the first part of that Old Testament, there were no pastors. There were no men of God in the days of Abraham. He had to meet Melchizedek face to face. Say, I want a personal encounter. Are you learning? Are you learning? Psalm 40, verse 1 to 2. People come and say, man of God, I need deliverance. I'm having bad dreams. Oh, my life is not going well. And I say, come, come to prayer shift. Can I see you there when I come? They come to prayer shift. Uh, 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 will you lay hands on me? Come to prayer shift. Should I bring oil? Come to prayer shift. Why? When you come, I'll teach you Psalm 40. He says, I waited patiently for the Lord. It might not even happen the first day you come. Patiently for the Lord. And he inclined his ear to me. That means God doesn't listen the first time. He, he, he sees if you are patient. Can I talk to some real Christians? Wambo <laughs> Jehovah. <laughs> we 
whenever you are asking God for something big, he wants to first check out your heart. Proverbs 23, verse 26. Huh? My son Solomon, do what? Give me your heart. That means he didn't give the heart in verse 1. Or verse 13. It was only in Proverbs 23 that the heart issue was discussed. In other words, God was looking at Solomon and saying, I see your heart is in other things. Your heart is in all these women. Does God have your heart? I said there are things that you are crying out for. They are there in your destiny. If you give God your heart. Don't look for God like you are doing him a favor. Hey! Because Honda fit a ponja. And I'm not married. The devil is a liar. Some reasons why people stop coming to church. It's nonsense. Even if God never gave me another US dollar, I will still worship him. The provisions of God are not just US dollars. The air you are breathing without noticing that you are breathing, he controls your next breath. Better worship him. Better worship him. The Bible says they entered a covenant. That's what we're doing. To seek and to worship him. And he gave them rest round about. <gasps> rest from witches. Rest from wizards. Rest from the occult. Rest from hardship. Rest from poverty. It's all found in his presence. Oh, how I pray that this generation gets it. Uh, even if this is the last sermon I preach and die, God forbid. Even if this is the last one. Uh, hear the word of the Lord. Be a worshiper. Look for him. Don't look for pastors. Don't look for a man who's not looking for God. Every pastor, you need to show an example of how to get lost in the presence of God. Don't just tell the children of Zion about you seeking God in the secret. Show them in church how to seek for God. Give them a blueprint. This is how you enter the presence. Bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me. Bless his Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul. Oh my soul. And oh. And oh. And oh. That is within me. Bless his holy, holy name. Listen. Then the next part of that song says. He has done great things. 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 Bless you. Watch this. He has done great things. Track record. <laughs> so we bless his holy name because he has done great things. Watch this. When the enemy wants to take you out of the presence of God, he will speak to you about one thing that God has not yet done. 
and he will make you forget the great things that he has done. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Watch this. For the things He has done. Is it Psalm 102 or Psalm 103? Bless the Lord and forget not all His benefits. You see that? You see that? You know that house you are living in? Try and build it today. He built it for you. The moment you want to forget, try and build another one without him. There are many great things that God has done that you have forgotten. It's easy to worship a God who you remember the great things that he did. You see, the, the, the Lord said to me, there are greater things I've done for you that you have not even seen. I'll give you an example. You, you're, you're driving along Second Street, you get to a place and there's a horrific accident that happened 15 minutes ago. You, you, you never stop to think that that could have been me if I was 15 minutes earlier. How many things has he rescued you from? <laughs> the terror by night. You were sleeping. You don't know there was terror by night. And there are pestilence that walk at noonday. The fact that you didn't see it doesn't mean that God didn't do it. Uh, he says there are things I did with my right hand and you saw. Uh, but there are things I did with my left hand you did not perceive. There are things he has done with his left hand. You can't even see them. But that does not stop the fact that he has done them. I want us to raise our hands to heaven and begin to thank God for all the victories he won for us without our knowledge. He has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things he has done great things he has done great things bless his holy, holy name real worship ends with what you give God the height of worship. You say, Lord, I've worshipped you with my mouth. I've worshipped you with my heart. I've worshipped you, listen, for the next level, with everything that I have. That's how you qualify for big things. Please, I'm not, I'm not telling you to empty yourself. Hey, close it. Kia, safe. Wega, unota gama envelope ni mapewa peke, uchichema. Ah, ena shukani envelope, utaka kwa peke kiraogo, uwe ori sapa altar. That is the height of worship. You see, some of the, the way you're looking at me, and Joshua 1 verse 8, do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you. <laughs> I had to reassure myself with that face. <laughs> Have you been blessed? All right, now raise your hands to heaven. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Right now, he's downloading everything you've been praying about in the fast. He's answering now. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's answering. He's answering. 